In the adrenaline field world of the WRC, every twist and turn is a test of skill, courage and sheer determination. Picture yourself hurtling through forest roads, skirting cliff edges at breakneck speeds of 160 km an hour. It's not just driving, it's a daring dance with danger that demands nerves of steel and let's face it, big balls. Unless of course your name is Michel Mouton. The thing that really captivates me about the World Rally Championship is its commitment to its roots. Sure, safety measures have evolved the cars and stages over the years, but the essence remains unchanged. The thrill of the unknown lurks around every bend, and in this high-stakes game even the tiniest misstep can spell disaster in the blink of an eye. Despite its ebbs in popularity, particularly in comparison to the glory days of Group B, true enthusiasts like myself remain steadfast in our devotion to the series. They say that F1 is science and rallying is art. And even though I'm a huge F1 fan, I can only agree with that statement. The looming scepter of danger casts his shadow once more during the lead-up to last year's Rally Croatia, serving as a stark reminder of the unforgiving nature of rally racing. The tragic accident involving Hyundai's Craig Breen sent shockwaves through the racing community, leaving a somber resonance in its wake. It's a sobering testament to the inherent risks that the crews face with every twist of the wheel and every press of the pedal even during testing events. The loss of Craig Breen serves as a poignant reminder that even the most skilled and experienced drivers are not immune to the dangers that accompany this exhilarating sport. In a touching tribute to the memory of Craig Breen, the Hyundai World Rally team made a statement by adorning their cars in the vibrant colors of the Braagtag and Heden for the main event in Croatia. Finally now, collectors can commemorate this heartfelt tribute with the release of the eagerly awaited X018 diecast model of that very car. The version I have here is the one as driven by Belgian duo of Thierry Neuville and his navigator Martin Wiedager at the 2023 Rally Croatia. This one was for Craig, so hopefully it's enough. In the world of rallying, few names shine as brightly as Thierry Neuville's. On pure speed, he's for sure one of the, if not the best around. But for all his brilliance behind the wheel, there is a glaring gap in Neuville's trophy cabinet, the coveted World Rally Championship title. It's the one prize that has eluded him, despite his undeniable talent and relentless pursuit of victory. In rallying, it's not just about being fast, although Neville's speed is nothing short of breathtaking. It's about being calculated, strategic and knowing precisely when to push the limits and when to exercise caution. It's a delicate dance between risk and reward, a high-stakes game where split-second decisions can make or break a driver's dreams. Take Colin McRae, for example, an absolute legend of the sport with a fearless driving style that earned him adoration and admiration around the globe. Yet even McRae, with all his daring exploits and jaw-dropping maneuvers, clinched just one championship title in his illustrious career. Why? Because in rallying, consistency is king and one wrong move can dash championship's hope in an instant. So where then does that leave Neuville? An enigma poised on the brink of greatness yet tantalizingly out of reach. Thierry has finished second on so many occasions in the championship and if you look back on those seasons he could have easily won one or two of these had the coin fallen the other way. The 2023 Rally Croatia was another one of these events where Neville went from hero to zero and back. Inspired by the memory of his friend and teammate Craig Breen, Thierry unleashed his inner warrior from the very start. Two of his main rivals, the formidable duo of Calais Rovampera and Sébastien Auger made the same mistake cutting a corner which caused them both a puncture. It wasn't all plain sailing for Neuville, with the third Toyota of Elfin Evans hot on his heels. The Belgian though remained unyielding, his eyes firmly fixed on the prize. As the sun set on the first day of rallying, he stood tall and thus on course to pay tribute to his fallen colleague by winning the event. In the early stages of the next day, he extended his lead a bit further. Trying to settle into a good rhythm, Thierry made a small mistake that unfortunately had big consequences. He slid off the road into a small concrete wall, which then sent the Hyundai careening into the trees. The Belgian duo emerged unharmed, but their dream of winning the event was shattered in an instant. Yet true champions rise from the ashes of defeat, undeterred by adversity. And so with nothing left to lose, Thierry and his co-driver Martin returned on the final day with a singular purpose to salvage whatever championship points they could in the face of overwhelming odds. With the memory of Breen driving them forward, Neville attacked the power stage with a vengeance, his foot planted firmly to the floor. And when the dust settled, it was Neville who emerged victorious, claiming redemption in the form of a hard-fought power stage win, a small but significant triumph in the face of disappointment. For me, this rally shows why I like Thierry Neville so much. 
There is of course a whiff of patriotism involved here, but there is no denying that Neuville possesses that rare combination of raw speed, steely commitment and a never say die attitude that kinda reminds me of the late great Colin McRae. In a sport where the machinery often plays an important role, Neuville stands out as a true grifter pushing his Hyundai to its limits in pursuit of victory. While his Toyota rivals may enjoy the benefits of more potent machinery, Neuville refuses to be outdone extracting every ounce of performance from his car with a blend of skill, bravery and sheer determination. This can become a double-edged sword when he's trying too hard to compensate for his car's weaknesses. Indeed, Thierry Neuville's rallying career is a tapestry woven with moments of triumph and heartache, victories and defeats, highs and lows. And much like Sterling Moss in Formula 1 or Raymond Poulidor in the Tour de France, Neuville's legacy will transcend those missed championship titles. Whether he is standing atop the podium spraying champagne in celebration or picking himself up from the dust of defeat, Neuville's indomitable speed and unwavering passion for the sport shine true. And it's this resilience that endears him to fans like me, just like Colin McRae did before him. Although I still believe he will win a championship before he retires, even if Neuville's career is ultimately defined by near misses and what ifs, his legacy will endure as a true legend of the sport. Ixo is one of the brands that is catering to fans' needs for bigger scale WRC model cars. They have a good track record in the smaller scales, but it's only a few years ago that they started to produce current day WRC cars in 118 scale too. The likes of AutoArt, Norev, Solido and even Minichamps have released some modern rally cars sporadically in the past few years, but the declining popularity of the series since the mid-2000s meant there was less demands for these models. Ixo tentatively collaborated with Altaya or De Agostini, depending on where you live, to produce and distribute 118th rally cars once again. They didn't only concentrate on the modern cars, but on the ones that defined the series in its long history. Even though these models were not exactly very detailed, it did give Ixo the opportunity to gauge what kind of interest there would be for 118th models of the current batch of rally cars. It didn't take them too long to be convinced to go ahead with the release of several modern and classic models. The cars they release under their own banner are a bit more detailed than the Altaya de Agostini versions. The biggest attraction of these Ixo models is a great price quality balance. The models are sold for around 70 euro and still have some nice details on them and look quite decent. They aren't massively detailed though and they also like opening parts, but for the price they ask you can't really expect a lot more. That being said, in my recent review of the Solido version of the 2022 Ford Puma Rally 1 model, you can see it's still possible to make models with opening parts for an even cheaper price. This might be a company thing though as most Solido models have opening parts whereas the XO models don't. Ixo also produce a lot more rally cars, so it seems they concentrate more on volume and range than on precision, which is fair enough. The models usually still look pretty good regardless. This 2023 Rally Croatia version here was pretty much a must buy for me. Just like many other motorsport fans, I was deeply shocked by the sudden death of Craig Breen. I thought the special livery Hyundai came up with for their driver was a fitting tribute, so I couldn't wait to get it in model form for my collection. As a Belgian motorsport fan, I of course then had to go for the Neuville version. An SAP Calapi version is also available. But yeah, I'm really thrilled to finally have it here, so let's go and have a deeper dive into this rather special model car. This model's packaging is a bit different compared to the regular black and orange boxes we see from Ixo. Just like the car itself, it sports the colors of the Irish flag in honor of Craig Breen. I think it's beautifully done and it presents really well like this. On the back there is a simple inspiring quote of Craig's, don't forget to enjoy, you have to have fun, life is too short. I just can see Craig say this with that infectious big smile on his face. The box design itself is very much the same as the regular XO boxes. It has these rather large windows on all sides but the back and bottom and XO logos on the front side and on the top as well. In the white part on the back there is a subtle reference that this is a 118th collector's model car. The bottom part then features all the licensing stuff and brand info you usually get, together with the model's info and barcode. The base on which the model comes is just the regular style packaging Ixo uses. It has a rather cheap thin plastic base with a removable cradle around it for structural purposes. On this side here then is all of the model's info and in front of the car, an Ixo brand logo. Since the box has these big windows and the plastic cradle is kind of hidden by these box pillars, let's say, the model could easily be displayed in the box. 
especially this version with the beautiful Irish colors as a tribute to Craig Breen. Let's start a review of the actual model now with some of the lesser parts on this model car. As I mentioned, Ixo makes these models with volume and cost effectiveness in mind. This of course then reflects on the quality of the model too. I know it's a lower budget tier model, so I can be too severe in my assessment, but there are still a few things that I noticed that shouldn't be too hard to pay attention to in the future. For me, the biggest flaw are the small bits and scrapes, blemishes or bad decaling you can find on this model. I have some other XO Neuville cars, and all of them have indeed a few small flaws here and there that are noticeable, so it's not like the one I have here is just a bad example. It's certainly not horrible either, but it doesn't reflect well on your brand, I would think. It just looks a bit rushed now, as if the workers in the XO factory are pressured to finish the models in a way too tight time slot. Actually, this is probably the case. I mentioned it's an entry level model, and it also shows in the detailing. Now, the outer details are quite okay actually, but it's the inner details that aren't very good. The inside of the cockpit, for instance, is very plain. Of course, without any opening parts, you can't really see much, but if you do have a closer look through the windows, you'll find it's all a bit cheap looking. That then leads me to the lack of opening parts. Of course, if you're not going to make nice details on the inside, it's maybe better not to have opening panels, but Solido seems to be able to do it, so why not you, Ixo? Another thing is that the model doesn't really feel very qualitative. I can't really put my finger on it, but when you hold it, it kind of feels a bit cheap and toy-like. Finally then, a minor issue I have with this particular car is that the wheels are a bit too much on the inside of the body of the model, if you know what I mean. They should be sticking out a little bit more, being the same width as the wheel arches, basically. This again is not really bad, but it's a bit annoying once you notice it. On the wheels too, in the middle part, there should be a black round cover over the wheel nuts, and this is missing on the model. I know I said I wasn't going to be too severe in my assessment, but I actually don't mind these flaws too much. I do still think the model looks great, especially in this special livery. For a basic entry level model, it's actually pretty decent. In my honest opinion, it would be better at a slightly lower price at around 50 euro, but it's not like I feel scammed paying the 70 euro I did now. One thing I really want to commend Ixo on is, funnily enough, their attention to detail. Now, I don't mean the more intricate details then, but the overall picture. In the WRC, the manufacturers use the same car for several seasons, unless there are significant rule changes or if they need to push a new model in their range forward. Usually the changes from season to season are minimal, with a few error tweaks here and there, but that's it. This Hyundai i20, however, has changed a lot compared to the 2022 Monte Carlo version, which was the start of the new Rally 1 rule cycle. For instance, on the nose of the car, there is now this extended lip sticking out above the grille. On the grille itself, there are these two bulbous blockers too, instead of the flat ones used back in 2022. The carbon effect on these parts is pretty good, and this is also the case for these air scoops on the side of the car, with a tribute to crack on them. The mirrors then also change to a more regular position, let's say, as opposed to the middle of the door. A big change has been made on the rear wing as well, which now looks much more detailed and aggressive. Here too, the carbon effect is really nice and features a very different pattern to the other carbon parts on the car. Ixo also made seemingly insignificant changes to the mold of the body too, with a more realistic separate door handle now instead of the previous try where the handle was just molded into the body shape of the model. Another nice change they added to the new molds are the new front wheel arches. These are now much more angular shaped and more aggressive looking than before. So these are great examples then of how the exterior details are indeed quite good as opposed to the inner ones. So the nose details, the new rear wing, or this little tow hook on the rear bumper are other good examples of it. I also really like these reflecting windows on the rear doors. This was not featured on the 2022 Monte Carlo version, but these are heat reflecting foils that are only applied on the warmer rallies and since the Monte event takes place in January, so in winter, it's logical they aren't featured there. The effect is really nice though and these four fasteners in the window frame only add to the realism. The wheels then also look pretty good. I like how the tires have these extra markings already applied to them, but they did forget to add a few extra markings, which I will add later on then. Behind the wheels, the brake discs and calipers are visible and are superficially detailed. So overall then, the model looks quite good. 
The shape is very nicely replicated with these aggressive wheel arches, especially the ones on the rear. The special tribute livery looks simply awesome and the colors are vibrant. I like the asymmetrical coloring so that on one side it looks like an orange car and on the other side it's a green one. The chrome Hyundai badges are also a very nice touch. The rally's event stickers on the doors are also very different on either side, with a big Zagreb Croatia on the orange side and a WRC tribute to Craig Green, and a Croatia full of life on the other side, which is kind of morbidly ironic. So all in all, I really love this model car. I particularly love what it stands for with a beautiful tribute livery for the sorely Miss Craig Breen. I'm very happy Ixo made this model car and I think they did a pretty good job on it as well. I really like how they added all these small details and improvements to it too, especially compared to the previous version. To really finish the model off, I managed to widen the track of the wheels a bit so they would now be the same width as the wheel arches of the car. The brake calipers have also been painted in a contrasting copper golden color and on the tire sidewalls I added the few remaining extra markings that were missing. To conclude then I'd say this is a very good model by Ixo. It surely could have been a bit more finely detailed, especially on the interior, or it would have been nice if it had opening parts too. But considering its price point, I think they struck a pretty good balance in quality versus cost. It will for sure be a popular model among the rally enthusiasts, especially the Hyundai, Thierry Neuville or Craig Breen fans. Although in all honesty, I actually wish this very car and thus the Model 2 would never have existed in the first place. So on that note, I would like to ask you what is your opinion of this XO Rally model? Would you also add one to your collection or would you prefer to see another brand make a more detailed version of it? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, thanks for watching this review video, I hope you enjoyed it, like the video if you did and don't forget to check out the other content on the channel, like this review of Sebastian Loeb's M Sport for Puma from the 2022 Rally Monte Carlo, don't forget to subscribe as well, take care, see you soon and please remember, you have to have fun, life is very short.